It is morning in the Westgate Conservancy in Kenya. Inside her traditional boma, Neitema Leleto is preparing food, helping her children get ready for school. She is a member of the Samburu, an ethnic group of pastoralists among many different groups who live on this managed land in the country's north. Neitema is one of four wives, a mother of five children. The older ones will take the half-hour walk to the schoolhouse, past wild animals that have wandered into the area from the adjoining national park. Samburu families have been living in this region for generations. But the school is something new. It started eight years ago with just a handful of boys. Now there are more than 240 students, almost half of them girls. The school is a symbol of hope. And hope is needed because life here is hard. And in some ways, it is getting harder. Herding can be a difficult and costly way of life. Take this goat eating scarce grass. Most Samburu keep their wealth in livestock instead of banks. Think of this goat as money. While money can just sit in the bank, this goat eats almost non-stop. Since it's a form of currency, it may not be killed for food, but allowed to graze for years, destroying the environment. It used to be that there was land enough to spare, but now there are more Samburu competing for restricted space. This is Neitemu's husband, Thomas Lelitur. Hungry Samburu livestock wander into the nearby national park and eat food reserved for Africa's iconic animals, which bring in much needed tourist revenue. That pits the needs of the Samburu against a precious resource that benefits all Kenyans. With less grass, the quality of land inside and outside the park has been getting worse. The range is overgrazed. A particularly invasive type of acacia is growing rampant. Because of climate change, the rainy seasons are shorter and unpredictable. But change is on the horizon. Thomas is one of many herders working with to improve the situation. It is a multi-step process. Damage is limited by grazing the cattle of multiple families together, a practice known as bunch herding. No gray zones are set aside to allow land to recover. Herders are given jobs as rangers, earning an income to patrol and protect their homeland. Invasive acacia is being ripped out and replaced with seeds to grow more grass. And finally, cattle are sold at a new local market so they don't have to be herded over vast distances to the slaughterhouse, destroying land along the way. Women too are part of the project. Thomas's wife Neitemu joins with others to make traditional beadwork jewellery and trinkets. These items will be sold in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. The work gives their families an extra source of income, lessening the dependence on livestock. It also gives the women choices. Neitemu uses her profits to buy food and clothes and books for her children. At school, the next generation is learning English and how to do maths. It's hoped these skills will help them get jobs and opportunities beyond the conservancy. There will be less livestock, but more prosperity. It is a delicate balance between a traditional way of life and a better future.